So, what happened to all the people who lived here? Follow the clues, boy. Right, right. Follow the clues. Okay, so there was an evil dwarf king, and he made all these people hunt monsters. The people put them in cages, and then... And then I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'm missing a clue. Back inside the castle? No. There is nothing more for us inside. But stay alert for Chain Dragons, boy. Perhaps you'll uncover more about this Dwarf King. Let's get to it. And next. <laughs> What'll it be? Okay, that'll hold you for now. Suit yourself. Now then, that story I started earlier. I was to tell you the story of Grunir the Brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but... No. Grunir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart. So the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day. Found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Hrungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrunir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock, he doesn't notice Hrunir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mimir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend. You there? The statue stands no longer, spirit. Then my bond to this realm is severed. And I am off to find the real god of thunder. He will know retribution. My deepest gratitude. Off he goes. Brave guy. Want to look for Thor on his own. He is a fool. What did 
the spirit leave us? An offering to one of the gods. Can we use it? No. Well, perhaps the dwarves can. This is where the tower to Jotunheim should be. Feels strange somehow. No doubt some arcane magics were involved. I would be not at all surprised to learn you are sensitive to that. Some statue. Who built it, you think? I do not know. Ed, how do we speak to the serpent? There's a horn on a platform at the middle point of the bridge. Take me to it. Finally! That horn! <laughs> Good. Now put my lips to the horn. That statue made in honor of Thor, and seen as the world serpent absolutely abhors the fat dauber. He was probably sick of looking at it. But doesn't that hurt? Well, he and Thor have a bit of an unpleasant history between them. Or they will, anyway. So I guess waking up to see it was worse than the thought of lumps of solid stone passing through his gullet. You want me to ask him? No. Our only concern is Jotunheim. All right, wish me luck. Uh, Members me. Why you? Oh, no, that's not right. Eh. Uh, Mokuno Huntunku. the pain of your loss. He will help you. Curious. What is it? Oh, nothing to be concerned about. What is it? 
he doing? Making sure we're headed in the right direction. Listen closely now. We need two things to get us into the land of the giants. First, we need to learn the travel rune that opens realm travel to Jotunheim. Second, we need to carve that rune into the special gateway. Is that one of the peak where we first met you? Correct. Except the giants, in their infinite wisdom, saw to it that no ordinary chisel would do the job. Only the tip of a magical chisel opens that gate. Luckily, I know where it is. And it's not far. He looks kind of mad for a moment, then. Now that, he thought I said you were friends of Odin. So forgive me, I've never spoken the ancient tongue sober. Wait, look! The water's dropped even further. You can see more of the realm towers and statues. I haven't seen new places to explore along the shore. Where is this chisel? Find me a boat, and we'll go from there. get to the boat, we can either look for that special chisel now, or go exploring for a little while. I'm happy with whatever you want to do. under the bridge, keep rowing towards the statues of the oarsmen, then thread past between them. Namir, what can you tell me about that giant lady with the bow? She was called Skadi, Queen of the Hunt. Her father was Thiotzi, who could take the shape of any wild creature and taught Skadi how to hunt them all. From the ribs of pack beasts, she fashioned second feet, allowing her to glide upon the snow so no animal could evade her. She became a huntress beyond compare, even to any god. Odin himself wanted her for his bride, believing she would bear him strong sons. But she spurned his affections, and for that insult, Odin vowed revenge. It was put forth that the Aesir were plagued by an eagle who would steal the precious golden apples of Eden. Not even the finest archer among the gods could bring it down. Odin knew that Skadi could not resist the temptation to prove herself superior, and so she joined the hunt. Skadi tracked the eagle as it flew where she alone could glide, and loosed an arrow from her unerring bow. When she collected her quarry, she found no evil at all. But her own father, poor Theotzi, slain by his own daughter. Enough. No stories. Taken Not well on foot. Our focus is the road. Completely understand. I'll finish later, lad. You who walks among the living, my beloved Gulvig calls to me. She yearns for peace, yet her remains lie in pieces. I beg of you, make my Gulvig whole again. You want us to collect her bones? Gross. Gulvig's sather magic knows no bounds. She can reunite you with those you've lost. Really? How? Boy. I can smell your grief, child. Rest assured, her magic is strong enough to create bridges between life and death. If only for a short while. Boy, we are leaving. They've taken three of Sweet Gulvig's yeah. bones and spread them across the lake. Yeah. Bring me her bones, child. Gulvig will reward you. Ah, good. The special chisel. 
Dazzle is ahead past this gate. Father, maybe we should look for those bones. Why? Didn't you hear him? We could talk to Mom again. If we keep an eye out, look while if we... you wish, boy. I will not be distracted by this fool's errand. This chisel we seek. What is it? I'm glad you asked, actually. I have just the story for you. <clears throat> there was a giant once named Fang. A very giant giant. Who, despite his mountainous size, was without question the greatest stonemason this world had ever seen. Proud Thamur hoped to one day pass his vast knowledge onto his son. But young Harimthur had the heart of a warrior. Perhaps the father had too much fear in him, or the son too little. Either way, a quarrel of theirs spiraled out of control, and the overworked stonemason, bonk, struck his son. Arimthur ran off into the night. Feeling shame and regret, Thamur chased after his son, but in his emotional state soon found himself wandering Midgard, lost and alone. Sadly, he caught the eye of the one person he didn't want to meet alone that night, so far from home. Thor. Man, what happened next? You'll see. Fell, he crushed a charming place famed for worshipping the Vanir god Njord. Thor always took credit for planning that one. The truth is, the sweaty ball bag just got lucky. Beast, we will take him down together. Changing arrow. <laughs> Thank you. 
The tip of one, yes. Very, very giant chisel. That big crystal on the giant's ring looks promising. Darn, that didn't seem to do anything. Oh, neat trick, lad. Thanks. Good idea. to the survivors. Oh. Thamor was a frost giant. When he died, his final breath froze everything. This is locked up good. Atreus, to me. Find the tip of that chisel. That's the magic we need. Hostiles. On your mark. 